Geos! And then there was one, one lecture to record, and then I promise to not bother you. I hope I'm not bothering you uh, with these recordings. Hopefully they're um, helping you through chapter 12 and, um, you know, and trying to do some sort of service for you. Uh, no pun intended, no sir. Um, so that you can uh, be ready when we get back from break. Uh, to finish up anything, I might have to put, you know, finishing touches to get us ready. Hopefully we can uh, have a test on Chapter 12 Wednesday when we get back. And then we're on to Chapter 13. That's it. And we, then we can start review. Okay, speaking of, speaking of, I know you're, you're hours from your break. You got one more day. Um, if you are traveling anywhere and you have, a, a you know, study materials for the big show. Guys, we're 57 days, 57 days away from the, from the exam. Take it with you and try to do something, start mapping out, um, studying, you know, every weekend, try to knock out, if you have a, if you have a review book, try to knock out a chapter or two, um, uh, every weekend, and then you're going to be on in pretty good shape. Don't just depend on what we take care of in class. And, and also Schoology on our Schoology page, tons of resources that you can use Quizlets and maps and, and such, uh, free materials. So you, you don't even, you know, need to purchase anything if you're going that route a little bit more frugal. All right. Okay, Martin update. So Martin is, he is up. He is already walking. His vocabulary is about 30 words. I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, he is, you know, during the day, he, he's pretty restful and, and very peaceful. But then at night, he, he's up. Man, he's, he's, he's kind of focusing, you, you know, trying to like focus on things. He needs to be stimulated at night. So uh, nights are, are are not incredibly restful uh, for Monica and I, but yeah, it's all fun. And then during the day, he's uh, so incredibly docile and 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 very very sweet. Um, but he is getting stronger. Um, so if he's lying on your chest, he's starting to be able to kind of try to push his head up, which may not seem like a lot, but guys, your, your head is heavy, and he's developing his neck muscles. So yeah, he's getting there. Um, and his eyes definitely he's he's using them to focus um, and try to actually follow you. Uh, around a little bit more. So that's good. That's another good sign. So he's a week old uh, today at 7.40 p.m. So there you go. Happy first week birthday, Mart. All right, let's take care of this. So section four, um, services in rural settlements. And we'll look at services in, in developed settlements too, or in urban. And even though we're more urban today as a population, you still have, you know, almost half the world's population living in rural settlements. Uh, there are two basic types of rural settlements. We have clustered, which means everyone is located really closely to one another, clustered, close, um, or they're dispersed, where people have a pretty a pretty um, large space that they can call themselves uh, within the community in, in which they live. Pretty simple. Um, in Africa, we see cluster villages like this. This is a Maasai village, so you can see inside that kind of donut circle. Um, that would be the village, so not large. Um, but everything that they need is 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 clustered within and all the you can see the various um, sort of circular homes are for all the various they're either where people live or they're the various services that the, the community needs uh, to survive. And the Maasai are a tribe located mostly in Kenya, but they're a nomadic tribe. So they'll spend a time in, excuse me, in one place and then they'll take their cattle around depending on how their cattle are, are feeding and foraging. And so they might stay in a place for a long time, or they might have to move rather quickly. Uh, but the Maasai are a nomadic tribe in Kenya, Uganda, uh, parts of Tanzania, but typically we associate them with Kenya, the warriors. Yeah, really cool. All right, the Maasai tribe. Told you how they have been migrating their cattle. Um, as Kenya suffers, unfortunately, with a drought um, for most of the country, and they've had a drought for, gosh, almost seven, eight years um, in many parts. They are their cows are migrating into Nairobi, and so they're finding green spaces in Nairobi. But that's causing issues because Nairobi is a bustling metropolis, and here you have these <laughs> wandering cows looking for food um, in a in a city that is operating like a you know a very metropolitan area. Imagine cows just walking around downtown Cincinnati. It's a, it would not be very good for traffic. Would probably shut the streetcar down, which here everything shuts the streetcar down. So there's downtown Nairobi. So yeah, look cool. I mean, it looks very Western, and it is. It's, it's their financial, um, and, you know, it's one of the bigger cities in all of Africa. Uh, very developed, very, very developed. 
there's again another picture of the skyline. Uh, you get about five miles though outside of the immediate downtown and it transforms radically uh, into, into a rural, rural area. Um, clustered settlements, we typically can refer to them as villages or really, really tiny ones. We call them sweet little hamlets. So there you go, clustered settlements. Um, you live in a small area. Farmland is usually located just, um, just outside um, of the village and it can be um, farmed individually or collectively, um, kind of farmed together with the whole community. Um, sometimes you might have circular, which would be what we saw in that picture of the Maasai, so it, it is a circle, or linear, where it's along, you know, a water route. So you're looking at that image on the bottom, bottom left, you can see kind of a small river cutting through, so you might have um, the, the village might be located along that, that water source. Um, think about, a uh, good example would be the Nile, so um, rural villages um, in Egypt uh, along the Nile River Basin uh, would follow that linear pattern. Clustered villages in colonial America. And then we have, when we think of farms, you know, the quote unquote typical American farmer, um, they would be dispersed. So you would have your plot of land and then you are, you know, you've got a pretty wide swath that is yours. Okay, your land, the American dream. Um, dispersed rural settlements, um, you think back to the 1800s as people were moving, late 1800s, as people were moving west and beginning to settle, um, you see, you started to see people, instead of living very closely, they began to uh, live further apart from one another. And typically we still see that in some of our, our big sky states, uh, Montana, the, the Dakotas, Wyoming, uh, the Southwest uh, as well. Um, but here, more in the east and the Midwest, we're pretty tightly controlled. We don't we don't usually have a whole lot of land to ourselves because we're more of a uh, uh, we're more of a urban population than a rural. There we go. So that's just that showing you those things. Uh, we've seen the same thing typical in Canada and Australia. Great Britain, I guess. Uh, I was listening because Martin Martin was making noise. Sorry, a little distracted. All right, um, the ethos. What does civilization mean? Well, um, it is literally how you live in a city, um, which the word politics also uh, is people that live in a polis, and so that goes all the way back to ancient Greece, uh, where we start to get that terminology. Um, the earliest cities um, were quite small, but then they ended up growing to be very, 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 very big. Some cities date back um, eight thousand years ago, so eight. Um, uh, long time, long time. Um, Babylon, um, from uh, 1,500 before we we get to biblical times with Christ, um, had 200,000 people. And then uh, Baghdad, oh, you can hear Marty's crying. Uh-oh, could be hungry time. And then he sounds like you when it's time for lunch. Oh, my gosh, guys. Okay. See, there you go. Um and then Baghdad, um, 700 years um, after uh, the Common Era, which would be when the time we um, um, history history says Christ uh, was alive and on the earth. Um, Baghdad had a population, uh, which is in Iraq, had a population of one million people, so quite large, quite large population. Um, ancient civilizations: uh, Jericho, Memphis, uh, Thebes. You're looking at the years. Um, Ur uh, as well along the Euphrates River. There's Ur, which is in present day Iraq, ancient civilization. Athens, Greece, the Acropolis overlooking Athens. Um, urban, where do we see the most urban? No, the, the developed states. So where a country, uh, the higher, the more developed a country, the more likely that it's going to have a, a larger urban population. So the United States, we're roughly 70 to 75 to 80% urban. Um, and then you can see countries like India, Africa, well below 50% of their population. So more would live in a rural setting versus a uh, versus a, or an urban. And you can see again China uh, in there. That's Cairo, Egypt. So there you go. 90% of Cairo, Egypt lives on the Nile River Delta. There's the Nile cutting through the heart of downtown Cairo. Cool stuff. Now, why do you know Cairo? I've, I've mentioned this a couple times. Um, the Arab Spring, so that was the movement in Arab countries, 
mostly Muslim countries, Northern Africa, even parts of the Middle East, uh, Syria, for example, Syria, Egypt, Tunisia, Libya. Um, they were democratic movements to try to get rid of old, um, almost dictatorial style governments. And they wanted to see democracies more common in the West. And so in 2011, they began to have protests and demonstrations to call their government out and to get their leaders to step down or the leader to step down. In many cases, they were peaceful, but in some cases, the, the government responded with force. In Egypt, they were able to oust their government. Uh, unfortunately, though, about a year or so after their democratic revolution, the military came in, staged a coup, and ha is now running the country. So their, their democratic revolution hasn't turned out incredibly well. We know with Syria, their democratic revolution sparked a civil war, which is still going on today, where the government is trying to eliminate those they view as rebels. So they view those that want a democracy as rebels, and they have brutally responded um, by killing and destroying um, villages and towns all across Syria um, to try to say that they are protecting their government, uh, when really their government, led by Bashar al-Assad, uh, look up his name, A-S-S-A-D, Assad, um, he is, um, many people believe he's a war criminal and he's definitely a dictator. So there's Cairo. There's the, there's an aerial view of Egypt. Uh, Delhi, India. There you go. Rush hour in India. How about that? Rush hour in Russia. Meanwhile, in Soviet Russia, bear traffic. How many miles per gallon do bear get? I don't know. With that guy sitting on it, probably not a lot. And then, oh my gosh, you know, when bears take to the water, what happens? Uh, urban settlements, you can just see it's showing you populations, um, the bigger cities of over 10 million people, um, all the way down to cities um, of two, 2 million or so. That's what we consider major cities. And you can see, look at the Eastern world. Look at, look at that, lots of cities with populations of over 2 million, upwards of 10 million people. And then the United States, our bigger cities are more spread out. They're not, um, the only place where they're not is really this corridor here, Boston, New York, Washington, D.C., and Philly. We call that megalopolis um, and because it's really one gigantic urban um, kind of string of cities that are really close to one another. And so we call it the megalopolis because it's got so many people. Population growth, where are the fastest growing cities? Typically, we see India and China, lots of growth there. Western coast of Africa, not as much in Europe. And we know what, you know, a lot of those countries are actually going to see stagnated or decreasing population growth. And for the United States, uh, West Coast and East Coast typically are, are growing. Uh, here's the, here are the fastest growing cities in each state. This is, this is via the Census Bureau. So that could change, uh, but, you know, because we're coming out with a new census in 2020. Um, so in Ohio, it's Columbus. Columbus is, the, is a growing city. Yeah, so it's already the biggest um, city population-wise in, in the state. Um, look over here at Arizona. It says Goodyear, Arizona, fastest growing. Here's my hypothesis. You want to know why? I think that might be. And stay not a place like Phoenix or, you know, which is the capital. I think because of spring training. That's where um, a lot of the Major League Baseball teams train. Um, they train here. And then they also train in, uh, um, so like half the league trains in Arizona for spring training, and the other half of the league trains in Florida. And so the Fort Myers area, uh, Sarasota, um, Tampa, that area is home to a lot of baseball teams as they get ready for the new season. So that's the Grapefruit League, and then the Arizona League is called the Cactus League. So maybe that might be why. Uh, there's just something random I saw, median home prices. Uh, what's the, like, Where's the most expensive um, zip code in each state? And in Ohio, most expensive is Terrace Park. The median home value for a home in Terrace Park, which is zip code 45174, just close to us in Anderson Township, 500,000 buckos for that. Interesting. A uh, picture of Seoul, Korea. South Korea. If you, ever, if you want an interesting thing, um, there's a photographer who was stationed in... I think he was working for National Geographic, stationed in North Korea. His name is, I think, Doug Gudenfelder. There's his, um, there's his Instagram. You can follow him on both Twitter and Instagram. He's got a lot of interesting pictures. So this is downtown Pyongyang. Um, so just follow him. It's just interesting. 
All right, guys, that's it. All right, goodbye. Have a great spring break, and I'll see you when we get back. Take care. Be